Monsieur le Président et chef de la direction de la Chambre de commerce de Montréal, Monsieur le Président de l'Assemblée nationale du Québec, Messieurs et Mesdames les députés, Monsieur le maire désigné de Montréal, distingués invités à la table d'honneur, chers invités, chers amis, il me fait grand plaisir de vous adresser la parole aujourd'hui. The need for a grand renewal of Montreal is in the air everywhere. We've just had a new mayor elected on the theme of smart city. Earlier this year, Francois Cardinal published a collection of essays on the future of our city called Rêve Montréal. And about two weeks ago, in a speech before the Canadian Club, Jacques Menard, the chancellor of my university, spoke bluntly about the future of Montreal. He called on all of us, including those of us in this room here today, to put the city back together and to put it back on the map as one of the world's great cities. Today, I'd like to further that conversation and talk about how universities can help. For hundreds of years ago, universities produced doctors, lawyers, and priests. That was about it. Today, universities are central players in the life of any city that is driven by the knowledge economy, as Montreal clearly is. This afternoon, I will offer three proposals to advance Montreal on the world stage in an era of global competition. For cities, like people, have an amazing capacity to reinvent themselves. It's never too late. Je suis certain qu'ensemble, nous pouvons aider Montréal à atteindre son plein potentiel, le revenu pour une renaissance. Partout à travers le Canada, on admire le Québec pour ses choix audacieux. La façon qu'a le Québec de vouloir repenser le monde est aussi sa marque de commerce. Vous n'avez qu'à penser à la Caisse de dépôt, Hydro-Québec, le Cégep, Bombardier et le Cirque du Soleil. The bold thinking and commitment to the betterment of society goes back to Quebec's early roots. It's worth remembering that Samuel de Champlain was a visionary who worked to create prosperity among the various peoples who were gathering along the Saint Laurent. That sense of bold adventure is part of Quebec's way of seeing the world dreaming big and realizing its dreams. And that is critical to our future. It's Montreal's and Quebec's, and yes, Concordia's, history of fresh thinking that drew me and my family here just about a year ago. J'ai choisi le Québec avec mon conjoint et nos deux enfants adoptés en Ontario. Comme nouveau Québécois, je crois qu'il est très important d'apprendre le français Et j'y travaille très fort. Oui. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> that said, there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing quite so humbling as having your 12-year-old translate your bad French to a shopkeeper. True. Say very. Growing up on farms in the American Midwest, I was eager to make a difference in the world. I'm a good match for Concordia. Like many of our students, I am the first in my family to go to university. And I've experienced firsthand how education is a powerful tool for change. And in a globalized world, education is a global right. How to deliver education to a vastly greater number of people than ever before is for universities, the challenge of our century. And like any sector facing massive change spurred by technology, we are grappling with new paradigms we don't yet understand. In the next generation, education is likely to be delivered in fundamentally different ways. And yet, and yet, it will remain an intensely human experience, no matter what the technology. Le monde des universités est prêt pour une renaissance, tout comme notre ville. Et ce n'est pas une coïncidence. Aujourd'hui, les liens sont plus étroits entre les universités et les villes, entre l'économie du savoir, la technologie et la croissance à l'échelle mondiale. Partout sur la planète, la migration vers les villes 
est un phénomène irréfutable. Demographers estimate that by the year 2050, 80% of the global population will live in cities. And already, Greater Montreal has more than 10% of Canada's population. So, we all love Montreal. We love its zest for life, for social justice, for the arts, for nature, for technology, for adventure. Our wonderfully diverse city has many young people primed for greater things. Pour créer une renaissance, nous avons besoin d'un grand projet. Un projet qui sera attiré de nouveaux Québécois et qui sera retenir nos étudiants. Un projet qui sera nous inspirer. As I said, cities do reinvent themselves, but, but what chemistry is needed? Think Florence, Rio, New York. Think Tel Aviv, Copenhagen, Melbourne, Shanghai. Each has had a healthy mix of entrepreneurs, artists, engineers, bankers, students, committed citizens, and newcomers. Each has had excellent leaders helping it toward its renaissance. Of course, an alignment of the stars helps too. And above all, each has had the sheer will to be bold, a will to embrace new ideas, to experiment. So if we want a renaissance for Montreal, and I believe we do, we will need bold commitment and real action. We will need to rethink Quebec's stance toward prosperity and wealth creation. We will need more philanthropy, and not just from the elite, but from the many. Nous devrons faire preuve d'une plus grande collaboration et d'une plus grande confiance. And we will need to think big. That means keeping in mind that the real competition is not down Sherbrooke Street or over the mountain, but well beyond. Après Boston, Montréal compte le plus grand nombre d'étudiants universitaires par habitant en Amérique du Nord, près de 200 000. So it's worth asking ourselves, how can this population play a key role in the revitalization of our city? And I have three ideas. First, let's create a network of startup zones. These incubators would bring companies and NGOs together with students and recent graduates who would bring their own ideas and contribute to the projects of others. Let's be ambitious and let's create 100 incubators in a network across the city with, say, 200 people attached to each one for the engagement of some 20,000 undergraduate and graduate students. That would be about 10% of the total population of students in Montreal. Sounds impossible? A generation ago, the very idea of even having 200,000 university students in our city would have seemed impossible too. So these startup zones would capture business and engineering opportunities and also the full spectrum of social innovation. Mixing engineers, designers, and artists together in a room produces magic. I've seen it. These student entrepreneurs and residents and the centers that cultivate them might be sponsored by a profession or an industry and might partner with one or more universities. They could be located on our campuses or in your businesses, in our museums, or in our hospitals. While I was at Ryerson, <clears throat> we set up the Digital Media Zone which brings together more than 150 students and alumni, not only from Ryerson, but from anywhere in the city. I'm tempted to make a Rob Ford joke, but I'll spare you. <laughs> in three years, it has fostered more than 70 companies and more than 900 new jobs. Last year, Concordia launched District 3, a multidisciplinary workspace where our students make their new ideas come to life. It was founded by one of our graduates, Xavier Hervé, who helps students learn about every step of business development, ideation, brainstorming, rapid prototyping, intellectual property, teamwork, and more. I've got a couple of success stories from District 3. One team of students had a modest goal, nothing bigger than transforming 
agricultural practices. They created and patented an inflatable bed for growing plants that reduces the volume of energy consumed by greenhouses and reduces the need for pesticides. Another team in District 3 devised the Human Battery Project, a fabric that draws and stores energy from the human body as you move. Such projects, such hands-on experience, this is what Generation Y, also known as the Millennials, is looking for. Il existe un autre lieu similaire à Montréal, la Maison Notman. Mais nous avons besoin d'un réseau et d'une plus grande visibilité. On to proposal two. Let's support the startup zones with new tax credits. In New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo jump-started the process by creating an initiative called Startup New York. Under a pa plan passed recently, businesses that set up shop on or near a university campus and, and support a school's mission will pay no corporate, property, or sales taxes for 10 years. And to attract the brightest minds, employees will pay no income tax for the first five years and reduce taxes for the next five. Just imagine such zones around every campus in Quebec. Imagine where the coffee chats might lead. Applying similar incentives in Quebec would build on the government's tax credit model that has helped sustain the multimedia sector here since the late 1990s. And applying the plan to both for-profit ventures and social entrepreneurs in the not-for-profit space would foster social innovation. And how about microcredit loans for these startups? Is it too much to dream that we might create the next Google or the next Meals on Wheels or even design the next Mars rover here in Montreal? Troisième proposition. Inventant de nouvelles manières d'investir dans nos infrastructures et surtout dans le talent afin de bien se positionner sur la scène mondiale. Every jurisdiction in North America is looking at a ways to attract and retain top talent. One example, again, from the Big Apple. Recently, the city of New York announced a global competition to create a new university campus focused on next generation innovation. The competition for land and support required collaboration among at least two universities. It drew entries from around the planet. It was won by the Technion in Israel and by Cornell, a fantastic partnership. For us in Quebec, we must create something big to leverage our talent and our infrastructure. Let's invent new programs that create opportunities for us to mix it up, make something new, solve problems together, venture beyond the known and the familiar. Having an engineering professor, for example, spend a semester collaborating with researchers on the campus of Bell Helicopter or at a startup in Mile End could help everyone. It's that collaboration across the borders of the so-called real world and the so-called university bubble that thrills people and generates new ideas and opportunities in both arenas. In my three proposals, what I'm really suggesting is to imagine a next generation partnership between universities and the cities that host and support us. In centuries past, universities considered themselves more noble than the gritty towns that hosted them. They built walls and gates around themselves. But in our time, universities will excel by opening those gates or never building them at all. Next generation universities like Concordia will gather strength and reputation not from how many people they keep out, but for how many we can effectively engage, for the opportunities we can create by partnering with the so-called real world. Urban universities like Concordia are particularly well positioned to thrive. And I'm happy to say that Concordia has never had an ivory tower attitude. Our two founding institutions were all about service. Loyola College, founded in 1896, which is Concordia's NDG campus today, offered a classical Jesuit education. 
may sound a bit old fashioned, but, it, but it's not. The Jesuit model has always promoted rigorous critical thinking and lives of service to others. Founded in 1926, Sir George Williams University, which is Concordia's downtown campus today, is named after the YMCA movement and particularly for its movement in adult education. Like the Jesuits, Sir George was all about providing a place where people could improve themselves and live self-determined lives. So for almost 120 years, Concordia or its founding institutions have been contributing to Montreal, Quebec, and the world. Like the strands of a DNA helix, these two institutions came together in 1974, forging the urban, nimble, engaged university that we are today. La vidéo que vous avez vu plus tôt montre toute l'ampleur de nos recherches et le dynamisme de notre communauté. Our faculty and students are chasing big questions in key Montreal clusters, from aerospace and clean technology to film and financial services, from ICT to the life sciences, from health to culture to energy and beyond. So Concordia is central to the economic and cultural fabric of Montreal. En 2011, la firme Secor confirmé dans un rapport que l'impact de Concordia sur l'économie de Montréal et du Québec représentait 1.3 milliard. The development of our downtown campus, the Quartier Concordia, has several beautiful buildings now. The glass facades of our new buildings blur the distinction between inside and outside, university and city. We like it that way. But even more than buildings, our wonderful students are the real bridges between Concordia and the world beyond. Most are Quebecers. 16% are international students. But a quarter are Francophone, a quarter allophone. Many are trilingual. Today, our students come from everywhere and go everywhere. And in a globalized professional world that prizes excellence, creativity, and drive, our graduates have a leg up. They are indeed next generation graduates. I've offered today three proposals on the notion that this wonderful old city, now a ville de Savoie, can renew itself, and that Montreal's universities have a big role to play. In the industrial age, cities turn to their waterways for economic growth. Today, smart cities will turn to their universities. To recap quickly, we need a network of startup incubators that make a place for 10% of our students to work in partnership with the private and not-for-profit sectors. It is said that Montreal already has a startup culture, and that's true. But that network is less visible than our potholes or our aging bridges. Around the world and closer to home, we need to promote the city as a place of great new ideas, leading research, and creativity. And we need our civic leaders to help us with that. The second idea, a tax credit for new ventures that settle near university campuses and for their employees. New York State offers one model, but we should invent our own. And number three, investments in talent and an explicit will to compete globally. Les villes entrent dans un âge d'or, une ère de cité-état. Nous devrions tabler sur cette idée. Together we can leverage the talents in our universities in order to revitalize our city and our future. Plus que jamais, nous devons travailler ensemble, pas seulement pour nous maintenir, mais pour nous dépasser. D'autres villes l'ont fait. Nous pouvons le faire aussi. J'aimerais vous remercier de votre attention et vous souhaite une très bonne fin de journée.